Keller, Texas is the city that we're featuring today. We're talking affordability, lifestyle, real estate. We're talking about it all. In other words, we're talking about everything that you actually need to know about Keller. So first, let's start by identifying where in the world Keller, Texas even is. Keller's located on the western side of the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex, just north of Fort Worth. Keller borders the cities of Westlake, Southlake, Colleyville, North Richland Hills, Watauga, and Fort Worth. And the major highway that will take you in and out of Keller is US Highway 377, which that highway will absolutely help you if you're trying to get to bigger cities like Fort Worth, which is located 25 minutes from Keller if you're trying to get from downtown Keller to downtown Fort Worth. Now, if you're trying to get to downtown Dallas, that's gonna take you about 40 minutes. And if you're trying to get to the DFW International Airport, that's gonna take you about 16 minutes. Now, those travel times should help you identify proximity to those heavily frequented locations that you're gonna find yourself going to from time to time. Given that this is a visual representation on how far you can travel away from Keller in 30 minutes. However, to truly share what the commute looks like from Keller, let's apply our how far can I go in 30 minute test. So as you can see, you can get to Denton within 30 minutes. You can get to Flower Mound, cover a good amount of Louisville. You can also cover all of Coppell, get into Carrollton, get into Farmer's Branch, just touch Dallas, cover a good portion of Irving, Grand Prairie, and a good portion of Fort Worth as well. So now that you know where in the world Keller, Texas is, I wanna welcome you to the DFW Homeowner YouTube channel, the go-to real estate channel for the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. My name is Jaime Resendez, your local realtor and team leader able to help you make money in real estate, whether you're buying or selling. So don't forget to hit that like button because that really helps out the channel. All right, so let's get back to Keller, Texas, because this is what you came for. Keller is a city in Tarrant County, which dates back all the way to the 1850s. Keller's been growing steadily in recent years to the point where the population is now over 45,000 residents. Keller has quite a few parks, schools, and recreation areas, as well as some great dining options for you. And according to the most recent city information, 82.4% of households are owner occupied, which means that the owners of the home actually live in them and are not renting the houses out. And for context, the state of Texas averages about 62.3% owner occupied rates, which if you're curious on how many households actually exist in Keller, the answer is over 16,000 households with an average number of persons per household being 2.85. Also, you might be interested to know that 96% of Keller's residents have a high school diploma and about 57% of the residents have at least a bachelor's degree. And now we have course know that the household income varies widely, but the median income in Keller is just over $149,000 per year, which is substantially more than the Texas median income of $63,000. Well, as far as the weather is concerned, the two hottest months are July and August with an average high temperature of 94 degrees and an average low temperature of 74 degrees. And if the cold temperatures are more of your style, the two coldest months are December and January with an average high of 56 degrees and an average low of 35 degrees in those two coldest months. Now I know I just threw a lot of data at you and I'll admit without much context, it's not gonna provide as much value as it should. So to add some of that context, I wanna introduce you to an external resource that we use, niche.com, which interprets millions of data sets and information across the United States, the state of Texas, and of course, the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. So naturally, today we're gonna focus on Keller's report, given that Niche has graded Keller in 12 different categories. And the following categories all received a grade of an A for Keller, and that's under public schools, good for families, and jobs. And the next categories all received a B in housing, cost of living, outdoor activities, crime and safety, nightlife, diversity, weather, health and fitness, and commute. And what's super unique about Keller is that this is one of those rare cities that actually didn't get a C. So every grade that Keller received was either an A or a B, which are pretty strong marks. And now that we know a little bit more about Keller and its history and more about the demographics along with how it ranks versus other cities, let's hear from local residents and what they have to say 
when asked about Keller. Keller is for the most part a neat and clean place. It is also quiet and peaceful. Neighbors tend to keep houses and front yards clean, looking clean and welcoming, while schools and daycares are highly rated. I have lived in the area for about six years and my opinion on the suburb hasn't changed too much. The only thing I really noticed that is changing about the area is that it is getting more populated. I feel as if the roads and businesses are too small for all the people that are moving into the area. Another resident says that Keller is a very comfortable town to live in. I've lived in Keller for the majority of my life and haven't been uncomfortable walking around the town or driving places. There's usually something to eat in walking distance and the new or older neighborhoods still don't feel cramped. My only wish is that more infrastructure was put into the city since the newer areas are still quite underdeveloped. However, there is a lot of development development and construction so I hope to discover new places that are being built. Another current resident says, when thinking about Keller, I can't help but remember all the good memories I've had here. The schools are top notch, providing a good strong education to all that live here and Keller as a whole, I believe is quite family oriented. And another current resident wants you to know that they have lived in Keller since late October of 2010. Growing up here has been quite great. It is perfect for families with young children. Keller has grown over the years and more established are being built in Keller so there are plenty of things to do and places to go. Another resident says, overall a wonderful place to grow up. The area has taken a 180 degree turn since my parents moved here in 1999. The area is very safe and is safer than almost every city we border except Colleyville. The schools here are very highly rated but seem overcrowded for some. The large lots and homes continue to be a big draw too. Keller though continues to lag behind on quality commercial development as we do not have a freeway running through the city. On top of that, to get to any large scale shopping districts, you have to bear through all the stoplights on Highway 1709 or Highway 377. Another current resident says that Keller struggles to accommodate people other than middle and upper middle class families. Most activities are too expensive for young adults, including shopping, housing, restaurants, and recreation. As the town grows, people are getting somewhat uppity as well. There isn't much to do around town either. If you can afford it and want to raise a family here, it would be a great place place for you, but your kids will be priced out of the area pretty quickly. And the last resident will feature says that Keller is a nice suburban city full of welcoming people. Keller Public Schools meet every parent's standards. Throughout the years, there has been an increased amount of construction. The construction has made driving around town a bit of a drag, but most construction is done in a decent amount of time. I would like to see more job opportunities for Keller residents. All right, so let's talk about how we handle reviews on this channel. In this channel, we avoid the super negative reviews and we avoid the super positive positive reviews. Those extremes aren't going to bring much to the conversation. From the negative side, it's usually a personal attack or personal experience that can be seen as an anomaly and in most cases is. Now from the super positive side, there is everything is perfect there. There is nothing out of place. There is not a blade of grass that is not cut. So that also isn't going to bring much to the conversation. So with the reviews that we go about here on this channel, so we end up staying a little bit closer to the center. Now, yes, there will be some reviews that tend to be a little bit more negative and some that tend to be a bit more positive, but we like to stay into something rational, into something that can bring value to you, the viewer. But either way, let's have a conversation. If you are considering Keller or have lived in Keller, let us know of your personal experience down in the comment section. Also, if you've made it to this part of the video, a huge thank you. And I want to ask you to consider subscribing to really help spread the word on the DFW homeowner channel. All right, so here's where we really start having some fun because there's a lot of you that enjoy going to the park so we need to analyze what is the park situation like in Keller all right so this is a park situation in Keller and as you can see there's a good amount of parks condensed in a small area which is awesome which is great but what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna go to the more famous parks the ones that go to the most so you get a feel of what's going on there so of course we have to start off with Bear Creek Park All right, so that was Bear Creek Park. Now let's cross the street and go over to Johnson Road Park.
All right, so now that we know more about the park situation, let's talk about something that really matters to you, and that's the school system. Because here's the thing, regardless if you have kids or don't have kids, the school system impacts the value of your home. So while you may not prioritize your school when you're looking for a home, your next purchase or the person that ends up buying your house when you sell, well, they may be looking for that school system. So here's how we're going to do this. In the description down below, I'm going to leave a link of helpful resources to Keller ISD because as a real estate agent, there's really some things that I can't get into. So I'm going to leave some external resources down below. But what we can do is we can feature where the schools are in Keller. So let's give all the schools a quick shout out, starting with Willis Lane Elementary School, Keller High School, Hidden Lakes Elementary School, Ridgeview Elementary School, Shady Grove Elementary School, Keller Harville Elementary School, Keller Middle School, Bear Creek Intermediate School, Keller Learning Center, Indian Springs Middle School, Harvest Christian Academy, Keller Montessori School, St. Elizabeth and Seton Catholic School, Keller Center for Advanced Learning, Messiah Lutheran Classical Academy, Woodland Springs Elementary, Caminito Spanish Immersion in Montessori School and Freedom Elementary School. All right, so now that we've gained a better understanding of what Keller is, so we've gotten some reviews in, we understand a little bit more about what the park situation is like. We have our resources for our schools. You're starting to get a better sense if Keller's the city for you. But here's the ultimate test. This is gonna dictate where you live, where you work, and it's gonna really dictate what you're gonna do the last hours of every single Saturday because you understand that on Sunday, you're out of luck. And of course, this can only mean one thing. Does Keller have a Chick-fil-A? Well, the answer is absolutely yes. Keller does have a Chick-fil-A. It's off of Keller Parkway next to the Kroger. So there you go. No excuses now. All right, so I'll be honest, I'm only half joking. Chick-fil-A is super important, but let's leave that behind us. Let's move on to the next category, which is, believe it or not, actually more important which is housing. Because regardless if you're a renter or if you're a homeowner, you need to understand the real estate market because it impacts your life today, it'll impact your life a week from now, and it will impact your life over time as well. Because we know that real estate is gonna impact your wealth creation, your cost of living expenses, employment, and so much more. So let's start macro and understand Keller home values according to Zillow. The typical home value of homes in Keller is 621,964. This value is seasonally adjusted and only includes the middle price tier of homes. Now, Keller home values have gone up 29.2% over the past year. And no, the year over year change in value is not a typo. Homes have accelerated by that amount and more. And to better illustrate that jump, see what happened to the home values in the last 10 years in Keller. As you can see, there's been a steady increase and steady rise, but when you get to 2021, it starts jumping up dramatically. Now again, I really want you to lean in on this real estate conversation, not because you're looking to sell today or looking to sell in 20 years. That doesn't matter because home prices are gonna go up and down. What I'm more interested in you understanding is the property tax situation that you can put yourself in because property taxes impact you regardless if you're a homeowner or if you're a renter. If you're a homeowner, you know that every single year you have to pay those property taxes. Now, if you're a renter, you may think that the property taxes aren't being paid by you, but you would be wrong. Guess whose money is being used to pay the property taxes? Well, it's yours as a renter. So if property taxes continue to rise, well, at some point, so will your rent. And if you're in Keller, Texas, your property tax rate Rate is going to amount to 2.3226%. This is comprised of the City of Keller, Keller Independent School District, Tarrant County, Tarrant County College District, and Tarrant County Hospital District, which means the owner of the property has to pay the property tax rate multiplied by the assessed value of the home in order to get the property taxes owed for the year. Now, again, I threw a lot of numbers at you, and without context, it's not going to mean too much to you. So, what we're going to do right now is we're going to provide some visuals. And the best way that I can provide value to you is by visually showing you the type of home that these median home values actually buy you. So we're going to log into the MLS and see the type of home that we can purchase and for how much. Now, right off the bat, you're going to see something 
looking a little bit different than what you previously saw. You saw Zillow's median home value. Well, you saw that value being a little bit over 600,000. And here you see that there's 147 properties averaging $964,000. Now there's two things here. One, home values have gone up even in the short months since the Zillow numbers came out. But two, this also includes commercial. So this is skewing it up just slightly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and only look at single family properties right now. And what we're also gonna do is we're gonna take below the average. So remember that this report came out saying that six, uh, a little bit over $600,000 was the average price point in Keller. And we're gonna go up to 750. So we're gonna search through this ballpark. And as you can see, there's 16 properties available for sale in Keller at the time of this recording. When you're watching this, things are gonna be different. So there's a link down below that it's going to do an updated search every single time you click it, regardless of the time of the day, regardless of the day down in the description. So make sure to check that out. And it's going to be properties in Keller only. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to start clicking through here so you can see the types of homes that are available. So this is a new build community as you can already see. So we're going to zoom out real quick. Didn't need to dig in on that one. So this one at 627, that also appears to be a new build. That one north of Keller Parkway, Pleasant Run, beautiful homes. That's a beautiful home. Check them out. Give you a sense of what's available on the market at the time of this recording. But let's go a little bit deeper. Let's check out this home being offered at $650,000 that has four beds, three and a half baths, 3,261 square feet, and on a 0.179 acre box. Now that home is being offered at $650,000. It has four beds, three and a half baths, 3,261 square feet and located on 0.179 acres. So let's continue. I saw this other property here that stood out. I'm just a fan of the evening and dusk shots. So anytime an agent puts one of those out there, I have to check it out. So this home right now is being offered at $695,000, four beds, three baths, 3,121 square feet and located on almost a fourth of an acre.
Now that home is being offered at $695,000, four beds, three baths, 3,121 square feet, and located on point two three acres so let's go a little bit further south so you get a sense of the lakes of highland oaks so let's check out this property being offered at six hundred and seventy five thousand dollars five beds four baths three thousand six hundred and twenty nine square feet and located on a fourth of an acre All right, that home is being offered at $675,000. It has five beds, four baths, 3,629 square feet and located on 0.254 acres. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to adjust the search criteria. So we were previously searching at a minimum price of $600,000, which was just shy of the average price that we saw from Zillow. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna make this our floor and we're gonna increase by $100,000 to give you a sense of what you can purchase at a higher price point. So we're gonna apply the filters. And as you can see, there's three results. So there's three homes right now available for sale at a higher price point. Now, of course, this is an increase in your budget, but at the same time, this is also less competition for you. So obviously the more expensive the property gets, not everybody's able to budget that into their finances. So this is what you're looking at. So this one's being offered at $850,000. This beautiful property is at $765,000 and this one's $750,000. So let's check this property out at $850,000, four beds, two and a half baths, 3,268 square feet, located on 0.287 acres. Now that home's been offered at $849,900. It has four beds, two and a half baths, 3,268 square feet and located on 0.287 acres. And we're gonna travel all the way to the southern part of Keller and visit this property being offered at $750,000, four beds, three and a half baths, 2,907 square feet and located on a third of an acre.
and the home that you just saw is being offered at $750,000. It has four beds, three and a half baths, 2,907 square feet, and located on a 0.36 eight acre lot. Now one quick note, by the time you're watching this video, the homes that you just saw are most likely not for sale. So for the updated list of the homes that are for sale in Keller, check out the link in the description. All right, so now that we've matched a home value plus some visuals of the type of home that you can afford in Keller, let's see what a monthly payment looks like in the city of Keller. All right, so in order to calculate the monthly payment, we need to use a mortgage calculator. If you have a preferred mortgage calculator, you use that. What I'm using here is bankrate.com, but you can use whatever you want. What's more interesting for me right now is to show you how to calculate the monthly payment and be fairly accurate. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pretend that the property that we're purchasing is $700,000. That is realistic in Keller. You saw the properties that you could afford for in and around this price. There's homes obviously less expensive and there's homes, of course, more expensive. But for our purposes today, $700,000 is the, our dream price property that we're purchasing, which means that if we put 20% down, we would need $140,000 for in terms of down payment. Now there's some additional closing costs that we can factor in later, but for when it comes to monthly payment, that's what I'm more interested in this particular part of the video. So 20% down is something that you can obviously put down, but know that you don't have to. You can put 5% down, you can put 10% down. 20% down is not a necessity. The reason that you might be thinking that you need 20% down is because you've been told that in the past, but in reality, the 20%, really the only thing that that's gonna impact is whether you have a PMI, private mortgage insurance, um, added to your payment. That's the only thing that it's impacting. So we'll explain this here shortly. When it comes to the loan term, we're going to go with 30 years and our interest rate right now, a realistic interest rate on the market is around a 5.5, 5.4, 5.3 at the time of this recording. Now it will go up, it will go down. So you'll need to check and see what interest rate is available for you at that time, which is impacted by your credit score. So these two items we're not going to focus on for this particular monthly payment breakdown because it's not going to have a bearing on here. We're already establishing that this is going to be our interest rate. Now, if we were putting less than 20% down, then we would need to adjust the PMI here. I'm skipping these just so you kind of see what's going on. When it comes to anything less than 20% down, you are paying a PMI. When PMI can be anything from an additional 0.5 to 1.5% additional to your interest rate, which again is Think of it as an additional fee because it is for not having at least 20% down on your property or in equity is a better way of saying that. All right, so we're not gonna put any number here because we don't have a PMI to consider in this particular breakdown, but just give you some inside baseball. Now, this is a property taxes. We've been talking about property taxes for quite a bit on this, on this video. So this is why I put so much focus and emphasis on property taxes. So let's figure out what they are. Let If we purchase a property of $700,000. And if we were to pay taxes on that entire amount, we would need to multiply $700,000 times 0.2. And I think it was like point, I'm sorry, 0 0.0233 something. So it's basically 2.33%. Um, it was something to that effect when we looked it up earlier, but I did the math a couple of seconds ago and the property taxes overall for the year would be $16,258. So again, this is multiplying the full home value that we purchased it for times that property tax rate in Keller. And that would give us 16, uh, a little bit over $16,000. And if we divide that by 12, that would be $1,354 in property taxes for the month. Now here's where we have to drill down a little bit further and sorry for all the detail, but I think this is important for you. When you purchase a property at $700,000, assuming it was um, on the MLS and you're purchasing it at fair market value, if you will, you're purchasing it at market value. You're purchasing it at a, what you could call a retail value. So this is this is the value of the property because you were willing to pay for it and other people are willing to wait, pay for it. And in some cases you competed to get this property. But anyway, the price that you purchase a property for is most likely, please take note, is most likely not what your county is assessing that property's value to be. Let me repeat that. The county, the number that the county uses is the assessed value. And most likely, not always, 
but most of the time, most likely the property that you purchased for $700,000, the county is actually not valuing it that high. They're not charging you the property tax rate times $700,000. Most likely, I was looking at some other homes that are for sale right now, the ones that you, you saw in the assessed value. I'm sorry, the uh, properties that we just saw earlier, their taxes were not based off of a $700,000 assessed value. They're off of a $600,000, a, in some cases, is um, 625,000, 580. So basically what I'm saying is you may be paying this price for the property right now, but you're not going to necessarily be paying that much worth of property taxes because the assessed value from your county is less. So your county may see this property as a $600,000 property. So you're paying 600,000 times your property tax rate. So that's one. Again, I know I'm getting to the weeds, but this is important. So we understand property taxes. So that's one. The second thing that we must consider when we're purchasing a property, especially in this uh, price bracket, is that if you're purchasing a property of this value, most likely you're going to be living in the property. So you are going to be able to apply your homestead exemption. In Texas, you have a homestead exemption, which helps you for legal, legal protection in some cases. But for our purposes here, a homestead exemption allows you to reduce your property taxes even more. So let's just say the county said you're, the house that you just bought was is actually assessed for $600,000. If you apply your homestead exemption, knock off some additional assessed value, so you're actually paying less. Long way of saying that this is, at this point in time, if you purchase a property for this amount, most likely this number is inflated. This is a conservative number. This is actually on the higher end. Will your property at some point be assessed a $700,000 value by your county? Yes it will, but it's not today. It probably won't be next year and it probably won't be a year from next, but it will at some point. So just give you a heads up. I know you didn't ask for this, but I really want to give you as much information because especially with new builds, people that purchase new builds, they are astounded. And I mean, flabbergasted in panic mode when they get their first prop, their true property assessed tax bill <laughs> in not many cases, but in, in, in several cases, we have brand new homeowners that have to sell because they cannot not afford the property any longer. Because as, as you could see, this can mean several hundred dollars worth of added price, several hundred dollars added monthly payment. All right. So hopefully you're still awake. Hopefully I didn't put you to sleep. But again, this is important. I really want to educate and share as much valuable information that I wish I would have known before getting into the industry before buying my properties and all that fun stuff because property tax bills on all my properties they're high we're not going to get into that homeowners insurance what we're going to put for homeowners insurance we're going to put $300 is this high maybe is this low possibly just depends on the home it depends on um let's put 250 I feel a little bit more comfortable there. Or let's let's split the difference because it's not going to matter. Your your home insurance rate is going to depend on various factors. It's going to depend on you if you've submitted any previous claims. It's going to depend on the age of the home. It's going to depend on any safety features that you have. It's going to depend if it has a pool or not. In this case, um, some of the properties, in, quite a few of the properties in this ballpark do have a pool. So that's an additional insurance uh, premium, right? And it also has to do with deductibles and all that fun stuff. So we're not. I'm not an insurance expert. So I want you to reach out to your insurance expert and see what you can get in terms of a monthly payment. But we're putting something here to give you a realistic scenario. We don't, we're not paying PMI. So we're not paying private mortgage insurance because we're putting at least 20% down, which means we have 20% equity in our home and then HOA fees per month on a property like this, you will have HOAs. So we're going to put that our HOAs are going to be, I'll give you a break. It's going to be a hundred dollars a month. Is it going to, it could it be higher? Of course. Could it be lower? Yes. But at the end of the day, we're going to put an HOA amount of $100 per month. And realistically, a monthly payment of a property of this value can run you $4,877 monthly. You're still here? I'm shocked. A little bit surprised. I thought the previous segment probably bored you to death and you probably hit the dislike button and then made a mean comment about my voice down below. But since you're here, let me know. What did you think? Comment down below. Is this more of a monthly payment than you thought? Is it less? I'm curious. All right, so let's kick it up a notch. We talked about real estate, which is basically our housing situation, whether we're renting or if we're paying our mortgage. We understand that that is part of the cost of living, but it's not the entire part of it. All right, so let's add a bit more 
color to the cost of living conversation. We see here that the median home price is $637,000, which isn't too far off from what Zillow was telling us. And we also do know that when we logged into the MLS, there really weren't too many homes around the median home price any longer, but that's another story for another day. The median rent is right around $2,000. The energy bill is roughly $169. The average phone bill is going to be $180. And when it comes to gas, as of this recording in the last couple of months, it has skyrocketed. So if I were to drive down the street, it would cost about $4.25. So this piece of information, this was taken from last year and it's a little bit dated. <laughs> now, when it comes to food and grocery, your loaf of bread is $3.09, gallon of milk, $1.80, carton of eggs, $1.68, bunch of bananas, $3.11, hamburger, $3.93. Now, if you're curious about the health care, a doctor's visit can run you about $108. A dentist visit can run you about $93, an optometrist about $101, an average prescription drug around $430, and a veterinary visit around $58. So if you're curious on the comparison between the cost of living in Keller and the national average, overall, the cost of living in Keller is higher by 19%. However, that overall average is heavily influenced by housing, given that housing is 84% more expensive in Keller than the national average. The utilities is about the same. You can expect to pay roughly 1% more in utilities in Keller. Now, your groceries are going to be about 7% less, and your transportation, when it comes to the cost of living in Keller, is going to be about 5% more. So at this point, you might be thinking, yes, Keller is absolutely the home for me. Where can I sign up? Well, if you're curious on what homes are actually available for sale right now, make sure to use that link down below that shares all of the homes that are available at this moment in Keller. Now, if you're still on the fence, that's okay. I'm not gonna try to sell Keller on you. What I am gonna do to provide you more value is give you some comparable cities that feel a lot like Keller, but are in different areas. And the first city that I consider a comparable city to Keller is right down the street, in fact, and that is Colleyville. Now, the other city that I think you might enjoy is actually on the other side of Grapevine Lake, which is Flower Mound. These cities have many of the same characteristics, amenities, and real estate options as Keller. All right, so now it's your turn. If there's a city on this YouTube channel that we haven't featured, then let us know in the comment section down below so we can cover it. Or if you're looking to make more money on your next real estate transaction, whether you're buying or selling, then check out the special link that we have for you down below.